A nuclear explosion is the instantaneous release of a tremendous amount of nuclear energy. A nuclear weapon is the instrument which brings about the release of this energy. Nuclear energy comes from two processes that alter the nuclei of atoms. One is fission, and the other is fusion. First, let us consider the principles of nuclear fission. When the nucleus of an atom of a fissionable element, such as uranium-235 or plutonium-239, is struck by a neutron, the atom splits, or fissions, into two or more parts. The combined weight, or more correctly, the mass of these fission fragments, is less than that of the original atom. The lost mass has been converted into and released as energy. During and as a part of the fission process, another reaction has also occurred. Two or three neutrons have been released and may strike the nuclei of other fissionable atoms and thus continue the fissioning process. Essentially, it is a continuation of this action that makes a fission reaction possible. Because stray neutrons are always present, there are limits to the amount of fissionable material that can be assembled without producing a premature reaction. If the amount or shape of the active material is such as to permit the neutrons given off by spontaneous fission to escape after only a few fissions, the nuclear reaction is not self-sustaining, and the condition of the mass is said to be subcritical. If the configuration and amount of active material is such that one neutron from each fission does not escape and goes on to fission a new atom, a continuous self-sustaining reaction known as a chain reaction is created, and the mass is said to be critical. A self-sustaining chain reaction can also be produced from a smaller amount of active material if it is surrounded by a reflector which will prevent the escape of some of the neutrons released during the fissioning process. While a continuous chain reaction plays a vital part in many phases of our atomic energy program, it is not a bomb reaction. To produce the tremendous amounts of energy required for a nuclear explosion of bomb proportions, the fissioning action must be a multiplying one where more than one neutron from each fission goes on to split another atom. When this pyramiding chain reaction takes place, the mass is in a supercritical state, and the uncontrolled nuclear reaction builds up until the mass can no longer hold itself together. Thus, under proper conditions, the result is a nuclear explosion. A more economical use of nuclear material is achieved with the implosion system of detonation. It is based on the principle of increasing the criticality of the active material by increasing its density. The implosion system can utilize either uranium-235 or plutonium-239 or a combination of both. constantly creating and releasing energy created through a fusion process. Fusion is the second process through which energy is liberated from the nuclei of atoms. The process of fusion is the reverse of fission. In fission, a nucleus of an atom of high atomic weight is broken up to form other elements. But in fusion, the nuclei of two lighter elements are combined to make a heavier element and to release a great amount of energy. Fusion in nuclear weapons utilizes two of the isotopes of hydrogen to release energy.
They are deuterium and tritium. Fusion will occur when the nuclei of the two atoms are given enough energy so that they can penetrate the repulsive force surrounding the nuclei. When the nuclei of deuterium and tritium undergo fusion, a helium particle will be created and a high energy neutron emitted. A total energy of 17 million electron volts is liberated in the process. In order to produce a fusion reaction, the conditions of high temperature and high pressures found in the interior of the sun must be duplicated. A fission device is capable of providing the conditions necessary to produce a fusion reaction. The nuclear materials of the capsule, formerly located in the center of the pit, have been redistributed as thin shells around the inside of the pit. This is a hollow sealed pit system into which we can introduce tritium and deuterium gases at an appropriate time before detonation. It is no longer convenient to place the initiator at the center of the pit, so the nuclear assembly will be initiated at the optimum time by a source of neutrons external to the pit. When its source tube is pulsed by a high voltage, the external neutron generator, or zipper, produces a burst of neutrons which will travel in all directions. Regardless of what type of nuclear system is used, or if it is a one or two stage weapon, there must be a method to fire the detonators at the time the nuclear explosion is desired, and not before. The detonators require about 2,000 volts to function properly. This voltage is supplied from a capacitor. A switch to hold back this energy until the proper time is necessary. One such switch is a gas-filled gap switch, which, when ionized, will conduct the electric current from the capacitors to the detonators. A second type is a fast-acting explosive switch. The capacitor or capacitors, the number depending on the number of detonators, can be charged to the appropriate voltage by thermal battery. Or an alternate method of charging the capacitor is with a rotary chopper converter system. The DC motor of the chopper, operating from 28 volts, turns an alternator which switches 28 volts through the primary of the converter transformer. The switched 28 volt current is stepped up by the transformer and appears as a square wave of approximately 2,000 volts across the output of the secondary. This current can be rectified by solid state rectifiers and used to charge the capacitors. The neutron generator is also supplied power by the same source that charges the capacitor. Since the neutron generator produces a pulse of neutrons, its output must be timed to coincide with the optimum time for initiation. A signal to start its internal timer is supplied at the time the detonators are fired. The electrical circuits which fire the detonators are maintained in a safe condition until the appropriate time by environmental sensing devices, or ESD. There are several different ESDs used in weapon systems. If the weapon is a bomb, which is released in a free fall option, the environmental sensing may be accomplished by a pressure-operated device which senses changes in atmospheric pressure, or by a velocity sensing device that informs the bomb it is falling at or above a set speed. A bomb dropped in a retarded option may contain an inertial switch to sense the deceleration caused by parachute deployment. A warhead used in a missile may employ an inertial switch to sense the acceleration of the missile during launch. The components described up to this point are essentially all that are required for a warhead. These components will perform their function upon receipt of power and signal from an adaption kit in the missile. A bomb will require additional components in order to furnish the power and fusing signals to these components. A switch is incorporated to supply an arming command and is generally either a barrel switch or a timer or maybe both working in series. The barrel switch senses a certain atmospheric pressure and closes. 
while a timer would measure an interval of time since release from an aircraft and then complete the arming circuit. A ready safe switch, which is a motor driven switch electrically operable from an aircraft in flight control box, isolates the source of primary power, a low voltage thermal battery. The battery will be activated at the time of release from the aircraft. All that is needed to complete the system is a method to fire the bomb. 